Uh, before we get on with the show, I should, I should just tell you a couple of things that have changed about me, because you might not know. First thing is, I'm very straight now. You should know that about me. I'm very straight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for laughing. That's nice of you. I, uh, no, I'm not gay. I thought I was gay once. It was just trapped wind. I... <laughs> I'm bisexual and yes, yes. I gotta tell you, I love fucking pussy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> love licking a tit. Can't get enough. Um, tongue punching a minge. I love it. It's LGBTQ+, if you're interested. That's lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, and then the plus is for all of the other letters, and there can be as many letters as there are people in the world. Some of the more popular ones are asexual, uh, gender fluid. That's where you don't see your gender as a fixed thing. It can be different things at different times. I was explaining that to Peter on one occasion. He was like, yeah, I know what gender fluid is, but the name gender fluid, you can imagine what it smells like. <laughs> Fair enough. Gosh, I had a heavy night. Covered in gender fluid in the morning, I was. <laughs> Uh, there's I for intersex. That doesn't mean, oh, yeah, I'm intersex. Um, I, I don't know what that is, but that's my, that's my intersex leg. Um, there's P for pansexual, which is how I now define myself. It doesn't mean that I fuck things in the kitchen, as Linda amusingly observed. <laughs> Non-stick surface, not when I'm around, Linda. <laughs> means different things to different people. To me, it's a form of bisexuality. I acknowledge that gender plays a role in why I'm attracted to people, but not necessarily the essential role. There's all sorts of common threads in our sexualities that we wouldn't otherwise acknowledge. You might only be attracted to blonde people, but you wouldn't say you were blonde sexual, but that would be a common thread. I think the common thread in my sexuality is everyone I'm attracted to is not attracted to me. That seems to be the common thread. <laughs> really about how they look or their gender or anything. It's just sort of more to do with that, how they hold themselves or how they sort of take control of a situation. I explained this to Linda in a very ham-fisted way. I was in Moseley Post Office in Birmingham, if you know Birmingham. There's two tills. There's one here, there's one here. On this till was a very young, very loud, very attractive, young, effervescent girl. She was wearing a Kath Kidson coat. She was going off like a human barocca. She was annoying. She's sort of, sort of girl who has live, laugh, love written in her living room but has also been done for GBH. Do you know what? She's sort of annoying. <laughs> Person here. And then here was a really elderly, sort of octogenarian, crunched over old woman, quite poor looking, sort of Mary Berry if she didn't have money, just sort of crunched over like that. And she's going, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. She kept saying that, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. And in the end she went, I can't hear you. Because you're shrieking! <laughs> And I said to Linda, I said, I don't know what it was, but in that moment, the way she took control of that situation, the way she extinguished all of this woman's joy, the way everyone was looking at her, I thought she was so attractive, so beautiful. Obviously, I wouldn't do anything about it. And Linda was like, oh, what, are you ageist? I was like, no, I wouldn't do anything about it because she's poor. But the point is... <laughs> There's all sorts of new identities flying around at the minute, new ways to describe yourself, and I think that's wonderful. But you've got two options when you encounter someone with an identity that you're not familiar with. You can be fearful of them, frightened, take the piss out of them, or be fascinated, ask them loads of questions, be curious. Kind of like when I first saw a platypus. I think they're amazing. <laughs> they're mammals, they lay eggs. What the fuck are they? The first platypus that scientists found, uh, they found a dead one. They did some scientific tests. Their conclusion, it's a fake. They thought that someone had sewn together a duck and an otter. Begs the question, who did they think was doing this? Like, oh, that's Martin. He loves doing that, Martin. The other day he brought this in, said it was a porpoise, obviously a dolphin and a bell end. Classic Martin, man. <laughs> so by Pride only sponsoring one of the letters and ignoring the other letters, I felt like they'd done a disservice to the community, so I wrote them a letter. <laughs> Dear Barclays, you probably know why I'm writing you, you bitch. <laughs> Sponsored Tom Daly to go to Pride, daft bastard. <laughs> Actually, it's great that you're sponsoring Pride. Pride is an LGBTQ plus event. It's about celebrating all of those letters and all the different types of identity that they represent. It's about people who are into kinky stuff. It's about some stuff that a lot of the people who work in your bank would find really weird. It's not just about a particularly attractive gay diver who you can use to improve the perception of your brand. So I'm writing to ask if you'll sponsor me. Not to go to Pride, but to one of the less airbrushed events. I want you to sponsor me and my friend Paul Chuckle to go to the Folsom Fetish Festival in Berlin. 
It's a festival for people who are into leather and being tied up and wearing costumes. I went a couple of years ago and nearly got wanked off by a unicorn. <laughs> I've mocked up a sample Instagram post. Naturally, the real thing will look much worse. Bob's your Uncle Joe likes it. I've really got into gay puns, basically. It's one of my new favourite things. I also, I'm slightly obsessed with drag names as well, because I've created a drag act, which is Nigella Farage. <laughs> She's incredibly racist, whilst making a goat Massaman curry is the idea. <laughs> Some of the names of drag acts, lowest common denominator is my favourite. But <laughs> this started because a friend of mine mentioned to me the Gay Olympics a while back, and I stopped listening to everything he said then, because I was thinking of games that you could play at the Gay Olympics. <laughs> he talked for like five minutes, I took none of it in, and then just went, Jizkus! Um, <laughs> Really killed the mood with synchronised rimming, but um, <laughs> I, it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> Pop, put. <laughs> yeah, there's loads. But so I asked you to tweet in because I've exhausted those. I asked you to tweet in with uh, gay TV shows, and um, what my favourite with these is when someone has a go, but it's shit. <laughs> you can see, they've really tried, but you've had some genuinely really good ones as well. For example, um, this one from Lucy. Anton Dix push the bell end isn't a. That's not a thing. Where are you? Lucy Campbell, where are you, Lucy? Give me a wave. Hello, Lucy, right at the back, quite right. <laughs> are you se oh my god, you sent in loads. I'm a gay, get me out of here. <laughs> King of the dildo, what? <laughs> Keeping up with the cums, and you just put in brackets Kardashians. <laughs> Ten followers, now we know why. Something made me love it a little less. About four years ago, I got in a cab, got into an Uber. And he was the lovely driver. The, the driver said to me, just started with Uber. I said, how are you finding it? And he said, oh, it's wonderful. I'd lost all my confidence. And now I can put food on the table for the kids and I feel so much better about myself. And I said, how do you feel about Kings Heath? Because he lives there as well. And he said, oh, it's a lovely place to live, isn't it? But you know, um, we do have our problems. You know, um, in schools, they're teaching kids it's OK to be gay. I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've had to deal with quite a lot of homophobia recently. I've um, discovered that someone in my family is homophobic, which is really disappointing, I suppose is the word, because that's not who we are as a family. We're not homophobic. We're racists! <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, I won't tell you which family member it is. I'll just tell you I've got three aunties. I've got Auntie Susan, Auntie Deborah, and Auntie Gay Marriage. And she <laughs> is... She's a born-again Christian, which is fine, I don't mind being religious, whatever, but born-again is the gayest of the religions she could have chosen. It's so ostentatious. I'm born again! It's so over the top. Literally means you came to it in later life. That's all it means. By that definition, I'm born-again anal beads. <laughs> so I'm in the back of this Uber and he's saying, they're teaching kids it's okay to be gay in schools. And I said, oh, it's a shame you say that because I'm bisexual and that affects me. And he went, oh, I, I, I'm so sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, I don't want to upset anyone. It's just, um, in my religion, the anus isn't meant for sex. And I said, well, have you ever had oral sex? And he went, yeah. And I said, well, the mouth's not really meant for sex, is it? And he went, oh. And I said, I'll see you in hell. <laughs> He laughed, he laughed, we laughed all the way through the journey. At one point he said, you're really funny, are you on Facebook? I was like, darling, I'm a huge fucking deal. But nobody like shouted, no one was aggressive, no one was violent. We just had an adult conversation about it. I got out of the cab, reported him to Uber and he lost his job. It's a nice story, it's a nice story. If you don't, grind, if you don't know what it is, it's a gay dating app, that's what it is. You, you're bloody hell, you know about it, don't you? <laughs> it's not dating really either, it's just a fuck fest really, but um... <laughs> First conversation was with Craig. He said, lol, are you ISIS? I said, yes, death to the West. <laughs> he said, OMG, I know a drag act called Alexandra Burke. You'd love her. <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra Burke? I'd go and see that. But I was in character as an ISIS militant, so it doesn't sound very good. I said, yeah, to be fair, it is shit. <laughs> Want to meet? So success, somebody willing to love someone from ISIS. Um, next one was um, James. I was pleased with this. James put, want to blow? I said, what building? <laughs> he said, OK. <laughs> Tell me more about yourself. I said, I serve the Islamic State. He said, I serve in Wagamama's. <laughs> 
I, then I didn't reply for a bit because I was a bit busy. So then he sent me another message. He said, tell me, if you could do anything, what would you want to do to me? So I said, I would destroy you and your civilization." <laughs> he said, that's hot. <laughs> Where shall we meet? I said, in hell. <laughs> I said, is that a nightclub? <laughs> I'm probably somewhere. Um, Final one. Oh, Barry, bless Barry. He put um, ASL, which means age, sex, location, if you're not familiar. I said, 18, male, Syria. <laughs> he said, Syria, question mark. I said, yes, I'm serious. <laughs> he said, ha ha, I'm in Milton Keynes. <laughs> I said, Milton Keynes is full of whores, we're all going to hell. He put, OMG, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, he's just so funny, so funny. I have been trying to destroy the career of Tom Daly. There's no easy way of saying it, I've said it. It's gone, it's out there now, I've said it, I've said it. I should caveat all of this by saying I think Tom Daly's amazing in lots of ways. He's an Olympic diver, I'm sure you're aware of Tom Daly. He's gay, I think he was pushed into coming out as gay before he was necessarily ready. There was a lot of fuss about it from the gay press and he's been a brilliant gay rights advocate in lots of ways. Um, you might have seen that him and his husband Lance Black announced a few months ago that they're having a baby together. Shouldn't be a brave thing to do in this day and age, but it was. He got a lot of nastiness and he's been serene throughout the whole thing, so I do think he's brilliant. However, I now want to slag him off. So. <laughs> Tom Daly irked me last summer for two reasons, two Instagram posts, and I'll show them to you now. This is the first one, this is him at Gay Pride. Love the way that he's extending his arm out there to show the parade march there. Love the look of and smile on his face, beautiful framing there. Before I go into too much detail about this, what's going on with the hand? Where is the other finger? I've looked at it loads. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's a lighting thing, whether it was edited out. I can't, I don't know how that happens. I've got no issue with any of that, really, apart from the weird finger. I've got no issue with this other post. Beautifully framed again. His skin looks radiant in that little triangle. Marvellous. Brave to wear a tank top, but he seems to manage it. I think it's wonderful. It's lovely. I've got no issue with any of this. I think it's all brilliant. I have no issue with any of this as well. Happy Pride, everyone. It's been so awesome to take part in my first ever Pride. He'd not been before. But let's not forget why we have this day and how much more we have to fight for in many other social justice movements around the world. No issue with any of that. Brilliant that he went to Pride. I think we all should at some point in our lives. It's good fun, if nothing else. My issue with both of these posts is not what's in them, it's what's underneath them, and that is this. At Barclays UK, hashtag ad. That means that Tom Daly was sponsored by Barclays to go to Pride. And I don't have a problem with Tom Daly being sponsored to do lots of things. I understand when you're an athlete, you've got to make your money while you can. You're not monetizable forever, you might break your leg. Totally get being sponsored, but to be sponsored to go to Pride, which is a political event, it made me uncomfortable. It's sort of like going Black Lives Matter with Tesco. It made me uncomfortable. <laughs> And I didn't want to make a big deal of this. I thought it's an error in judgment in some ways. Didn't want to make a big fuss about it. All I thought I'd do is a bit of light trolling of Tom Daly. That's all I thought I'd do. So what I did is I went onto this very post and I commented on it with hashtags of rival banks. That's all I did. <laughs> hashtag NatWest, hashtag Santander, hashtag HSBC. And for some reason, dozens of other people started doing it as well. Hashtag Northern Rock, a nice nostalgic one. Viet Cong Bank, an international one. Dozens of people did this, and I know that celebrities get paid loads for this. Barclays will have had a PR team all over it. I should mention that I trolled Tom Daly in a lot lighter way about three years ago. He posted to his Twitter a little post basically saying, just take the image below, personalise it. Just wanted you to customise an image in your own way. That's all he wanted you to do. Of course, I put him in a smack den. Who wouldn't in my position? <laughs> Open bloody goal, Tom. So that was it, really, as far as I was concerned. I've done my post, other people have commented, point made. It was, in, I felt an error in judgment, that was it. Next day, I get a phone call. It's from a friend of mine who's a photographer. He's photographed the Olympic diving team on a few occasions, and he's also photographed me. And he said, Joe, you need to go on Ross Haslam's Instagram. Now, I didn't know who Ross Haslam was at the time. He is another British diver who went to Budapest the day after Pride with Tom Daly for a competition. And he posted a video. The video you don't necessarily need to see. I will show it to you. It's a panoramic of Budapest. It's done weirdly. It's a portrait thing, but he's done it on landscape, which I don't understand. Also, the sound in the background's not great, so I will play it to you twice. But you can hear in the background Tom Daly's voice, and I just want you to listen out for it. Have a listen to this clearly now. Uh, the whole, uh, the lighting situation. 
Now, he might be saying the lighting situation, but I think Tom Daly says the lysit situation. <laughs> Have another listen just to double check. The, of the whole. Uh, the lysit situation. Does that sound like lysit to you? <laughs> I'm a situation. <laughs> Not sure who he's talking to in that clip. Presumably the assassin he's got to take me out. <laughs> I like the license situation. I'm going to write a book, The License Situation. There's the cover. <laughs> I thought, this has got out of hand. I'm a situation all of a sudden. I didn't want to be a situation. I just was a bit of light trolling, and suddenly I'm a situation. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, actually, in this regard, I do want to be a situation, because I care about this shit. And I'll explain why. Pride is an LGBTQ plus event. There's a lot of letters there, and often Pride and its sponsors only focus on the G, often gay men with six packs. But there's a lot of other letters there that deserve our attention. For example, T for trans. I've got a lot of trans friends at the minute who feel really attacked, feel really unsafe. They feel really attacked by the right-wing press. They feel more attacked by my mum's friend, Linda. She... <laughs> She's the sort of person who says, a woman's place is in the home, and then spends 90% of her time in all bar one. <laughs> She's a basic bitch. And she, um... She said to me once, she said, trans people are unnatural, whilst eating a punnet of seedless grapes, the irony of which did not pass me by. <laughs> She had a go at me for painting my nails. I paint my nails now. I do it for two reasons. One, I like the colour. Also, I bite my fingernails because they're delicious. And when I paint them, it stops you from biting them. It's the only thing that seems to have worked. And she said, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't paint your nails. And I said, why is that, Linda? And she said, well, it's an essential part of being a woman, isn't it, wearing makeup? I said, I'm, I'm sorry, do you think your husband Kevin's going to see this, get confused and try and fuck me? Is that the issue? <laughs> But what he was referring to was, at that time, we had protests in our local area outside one of our schools. It was against this, you might remember, it was in the press a little bit. It's called No Outsiders, and it was a series of books that had been curated by one of the teachers at the school, a man called Andrew Moffat. And it was literally books that teach kids that some people have mummies and mummies and daddies and daddies and all different shapes and sizes of family. This is one of the books, Mommy, Mama and Me, completely harmless book. I'm against this book myself, just because it looks to me like they're raising a young Phil Spector. But other than... <laughs> perfectly nice book. Um, this is one of the other books, Daddy, Popper and Me. Again, I'm against this because it looks like Dominic Cummings and I are raising a child with you. <laughs> I think that's fairly clear. But, um... <laughs> Our MP at the time was this man, a man called Roger Godsiff. Now, I know he looks like a pantomime villain. He's absolutely not. He's a real-life villain. He's a twat. And he, um, he's a Labour MP, voted against gay marriage. And while these anti-LGBT protests going on in his constituency, he was nowhere to be seen. I'd emailed him, no response. And in the end, I was like, I'm just going to have to smoke this prick out. So I just did, just did a bit of light trolling of Roger Godsiff. That's all I did. I just tweeted. I just said, has anyone seen Roger Godsiff? I think I saw him riding his bike. <laughs> Where might you have seen him? People went mad for this. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the gym getting serious games. <laughs> I saw him playing for the local team. <laughs> It got weird quite quickly, but that's Twitter, isn't it? That's what happens on Twitter. <laughs> but while Roger Godsiff was nowhere to be seen, these protests kept going on. They went on for weeks. And in the end, the protesters started speaking to the press, and they're saying mad shit, like this is to the BBC. When it comes to sex and things, why are they teaching them that? Why can't they just teach them what they need to be taught? No one was teaching kids how to have gay sex. That's not what these books are about. They're literally teaching kids that some people have mummies and mummies, daddies and daddies, and all different shapes and sizes of family. No one would write a book teaching kids how to have gay sex. And then I thought, I would like to see that book. And, you know, <laughs> sometimes if you want something to exist... <laughs> You have to make it yourself, totally. So, this is A is for anal. I've been working on it for a while. It's a, it's a, it's a very simple concept in many ways. Very simple concept. Teach a child the alphabet and gay sex. It's a very simple concept. David Walliams gave me a quote which is so nice of you. You didn't have to do that. So lovely of David Walliams. And, uh, and we could play this together, boys and girls. Shout out, what do we think B is for, boys and girls? Balls. Well done, it is balls. It gets trickier. What do we think C's for? <laughs> CBT, lovely thought. No, it's not, but there's no wrong answers here. Anyone else? Cock cage. Cock cage? It's not cock cage, but it could, it could be a cock cage. Yeah, no, I'll give it to you. It's cupping another bloke's balls. That's what it is. <laughs> what do we think D's for, boys and girls? Dark room. <laughs> Dark room. There's some queers in. There we go. <laughs> Some of you might need to Google that is later. Some confused straight people looking at me there. What's a dark room? Just go to it. There's a place called Bolts that I'd recommend. Anyway, um, uh, 
uh, uh, E is quite tricky. What do you think E is for, boys and girls? No, that's a nice thought there, Ellen, a nice thought, lovely. E, emo. It is easy access, well done. Said so confidently. Dad, is that you? <laughs> in in uh, in Newcastle, somebody said, "Is it E? That hurts." It should be. It should be. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. You're all going to get this one. Last one, boys and girls. After three, what do we think F is for? One, two, three. Fisting. Fisting? It's fighting homophobia, actually. <laughs> Fisting. That is disgusting, fisting. This is for children. <laughs> and you're shouting fisting. <laughs> G is for gay, I put Alan should. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it should be gay lord. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> frustrated with the language of sexuality as well because I know we've got work to do there because the three main words that we use are homosexual, heterosexual and bisexual. All of these words just to do with gender and only gender. For example, if you say you are a heterosexual male, literally all that means is you are attracted to women. But of course you won't be attracted to all women. You'll be attracted to a type of woman, blonde, brunette, your partner, whoever it is. And so I feel like it's more nuanced than that, more complex. I prefer the word pansexual. Then people think you're fucking things in the kitchen so I don't know <laughs> stuff. And I don't know what I want, really, because sometimes I feel like I just want us all to be fluid and no-one ever comes out, but then you would never have the coming-out story. And my favourite story in the land is a coming-out story. It's my friend Sam. He's a full gay, and he lives <laughs> at home with his parents, as I do, and he just got the confidence the one night. I don't know where from, and his mum was in the bath. So he went and he knocked on the bathroom door, and she put a towel around. She came to the door, and she said, What is it, Sam? And he went, Mum, I'm gay. And she went, well, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> I said gay, not incestuous. <laughs> Running for the town. I love that story so much, I love it. I know that by and large, the people of this neighborhood are immensely inclusive of LGBTQ plus people, and importantly, up for a laugh. A few years ago, against the backdrop of our local MP coming out in support of anti-queer protests outside schools, I hatched a little plan. My goal was to bring this inclusivity and tolerance to the fore, to turn us into a gayberhood. I decided it would be called Queen's Heath. I also wanted to get my house price up, because I wanted to fuck off an estate agent called Greg. <laughs> Many of you have been liaising with a man called Ken Roberts at the Gayberhood Foundation. You were so kind and helpful to Ken, but it's time for you to know the truth, which is that he was me all along. If I'm entirely honest, I'm amazed none of you clocked it was me. I didn't hide my tracks brilliantly. Full disclosure, I've been shouting about Queen's Heath for years. How did you not spot this? It was me who came up with the name. How did you not spot that the man on the Facebook group is clearly the work of Lisa Scott Lee? <laughs> see on the list of mediums for my painting of Chris Whitty that one of them was a queen's sheath. <laughs> Why did no one ask me what my weird t-shirt was when I handed over the cheque to the Lord Mayor? It's a picture of a boy. That boy is an American footballer called Heath Queen. <laughs> he looks like he has a gentle soul. Did you not spot the necklace I've been wearing on national television for the last three years with the letters Q and H? Did you not see the map I planted in an episode of my Channel 4 show, Joe Lysis Got Your Back, for a place called Queen's Heath? How did none of you spot when last year I literally said Queen's Heath on the one show? Um, but you spoke, Joe, about, you know, how humour has really got you through some, well, all of the tricky things that have cropped up in your life, really. Oh, Queen's Heath, I'd tell me about it. Three years ago, I did it on Strictly Come Dancing. Shout out to my mum and her friends. Those Queen's Heath, the fact that I'm doing this as the coolest thing I've ever done. Those Queen's Heath, Queen's Heath. Queen's Heath. How did you not notice on the Gaberhood Foundation website, I'm up there smiling in the window. <laughs> You didn't spot any of this, because ultimately, you didn't need to. 
You didn't need me to make this march a success because you already believe that this place can and should be a safe haven for LGBTQ plus people. I gave you the smallest of pushes. And you turned it into something marvelous. To paraphrase my friend, the great Josie Long, you wanted something to exist, so you made it yourself. With pride, Joe Lysen. <laughs>